This is the first conviction of its kind in the UK. We could not have achieved this without the courage of one person, our victim survivor. I want to commend him for his bravery in speaking out. As the sad and horrible news of Ekwere Madu's being found guilty of organ trafficking by a UK court went viral, it's been followed by mixed reactions on social media. However, many maintain that the Ekwere Madu's case should serve as a lesson to African leaders and bad governance affects even politicians who think they are above the law. Elaborating, many claimed that Ekwere Madu, in all his 16 years in the Senate, chose to amass wealth for himself and his family instead of investing in his state infrastructure, like building a world-class medical facility. But this begs the question, how much wealth did Ekwere Madu amass at the detriment of his state infrastructure? In December 2015, Ekwere Madu made the news following a report that the Senate would be spending about 329.5 million naira to add 10 new vehicles to the Deputy Senate President's convoy alone. The convoy is to include a Mercedes-Benz S550 2016 that goes for about 49 million naira, two Toyota Prado SUVs cost 37 million naira, 149 million naira, four Toyota Hilux SS auto vehicles 102.4 million naira, and a Toyota Hiace Boss 2016 model going as high as 28.4 million naira. Days after, the former Deputy Senate President in a report published by Premium Times was alleged to have embezzled 7.75 billion naira meant for the amendment of the 1999 Constitution. The 49-member Senate Committee on Constitution Review, reportedly led by the Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwere Madu, pocketed and shared the money among themselves. Fast forward to July 2018, the former lawmaker was already under the radar of the EFCC as they investigated him for conspiracy, abuse of office and money laundering and fraud. A whistleblower had reported the former lawmaker for owning 10 houses in Abuja, 2 in London, 8 in Dubai and 3 in Florida, US, worth millions of dollars. The anti-graft agency laid siege to the elite lawyer's house in Abuja, preventing him from attending a plenary at the National Assembly. It took the intervention of ex-Senate President Bukola Saraki for Ekwere Madu to be left off the hook at the time, only for the EFCC to come back hunting in 2021, arresting the former lawmaker over another allegation of fraud. The commission accused the politician of failing to explain how it came about 22 properties in Nigeria, the United States, the United Kingdom and the United Arab Emirates. The federal government later approached the Federal High Court, Abuja, to grant an order for the forfeiture of the properties. In November 2022, it turned out that Ekwere Madu owns at least 40 properties that cannot be explained, and the court granted the request to forfeit all 40 properties. The interim forfeiture order will affect 10 properties in Enugu, 1 in Lagos, 15 in the Federal Capital Territory, 9 in Dubai, the United Emirates Republic, UAE, 3 in the USA and 2 in the United Kingdom. Now, after his arrest for organ trafficking in the UK, a Twitter user with the handle at Just Society for All has told an unverified story of how Ekwere Madu allegedly diverted 400 million naira for a renal treatment center at the University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital in Enugu. The user claimed that if the former senator had done the right thing, his ailing daughter, Sonia, may have gotten a kidney transplant surgery there and jail would not be in view. Of course, this has been followed by mixed reactions. One of the first people to react to Ekwere Madu's conviction is Bashir El Rufai, the son of Kaduna State Governor Nasir El Rufai. He tweeted, If he built a standard-grade hospital in Enugu State, none of this nonsense would have happened. The only person that needs prayers is the poor boy whose kidney Ekwere Madu and his wife wanted to invest. They believe their daughter's life is worth more. He is somebody's child too. Also reacting, Senator Shehu Sonny wrote, For your daughter, you got into this trouble. My prayers for you, your wife, and others in this travail. One user tweeted, Bad governance affects both the rich and the poor. If you doubt me, ask Ekwere Madu. If there were good hospitals in Nigeria, he wouldn't take his daughter to the UK, where he is now going to serve up to 10 years in prison after being found guilty of organ harvesting. Another user shared Ekwere Madu's prison photo. He wrote, Lesson to corrupt Nigerian politicians. There will be a prize for bad and good deeds. Karma clearly is real. One wrote, I have zero pity for Ikwere Madu and his wife. 
it has now been confirmed that he is an organ harvester and should suffer for it. After stealing our nation's resources, he wants to steal our kidney and life. Some politicians are very wicked. He should enjoy his time in jail. Another tweeted, It's so funny because if Ike Ikuirimadu successfully harvested that guy's organ for his daughter, he would have gone to church for Thanksgiving and everybody there would clap too. That's how our churches in Nigeria work. They thrive on miracles. One user wrote, E.K. Ikuirimadu is convicted for organ trafficking in UK and Igbos are not supporting him because he committed a crime. Bola Tinubo was convicted of drug trafficking in USA and some Yorubas are supporting him because he's a Yoruba man. We Yorubas should learn from the Igbos. Another wrote, Throw back to when E.K. Ikuirimadu was beaten in Germany. Igbos can never support corrupt politicians. Go and verify. One wrote, I was at the criminal court in London for the trials of the Ikuirimadus. Sonia, the daughter, still needs a transplant. UK authorities are refusing. I plead with Nigerian government to intervene in enforcing Sonia's right to life. No matter the trial outcome, Sonia needs a chance to leave. One other tweeted, UK government cannot assist Sonia to get kidney donor. Sonia has to go on a waiting list like every other person. Whoever wanted to donate to Sonia has to specifically mention Sonia Ekwerimadu. That is the only time she can jump the waiting list. Having said all this, it's a process. Tell us guys, what do you think about the connection between a former senator, Ike Ekwerimadu, and his wife, Beatrice? Is this a case of exploitation or a case of bad governance? Do you agree they could have prevented this if they had invested in their state's medical infrastructure? Lastly, is this a wake-up call and will it be a big lesson for all African leaders? Share your opinion in the comment section down below. If you found this video informative, please comment, like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe for more well-researched African stories and news we know you would like. Click on the bell sign to be notified every time we upload a new video so that you don't miss out. Thanks for watching and see you on our next one.